Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And today, guys, uh, ceasefire, uh, of course, broken, but not only broken, Bashar al-Assad uh, saying, according to RT News, that the ceasefire is now officially over. The question really remains, was there ever a ceasefire to begin with? Uh, we, clearly, we can see even the British, according to RT News, uh, has admitted their involvement in the airstrikes that hit Syrian government forces. And, uh, and today, we were there on the border with Damascus there overlooking the entire region around Damascus. But what really troubled us was not just the fact that we could tell personally up close that there was no ceasefire, but guys, one thing that I could not help to think about, and that's Isaiah 17:1. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Guys, when we were there on both the east of Damascus as well on the north uh, side of Damascus, there were battles going on. Of course, when you go to the far east of Damascus, it is a great distance for us to be able to view. You could hear the bombs going off in the background, and uh, once they begin to get closer, then you could really hear them going off. A lot of shelling going on. Uh, you could hear the grad launchers going off. Uh, just really, really... Uh, tremendous battle all around Damascus and no doubt that if the uh, Syrian army, if any falter goes anywhere, if any more mistakes happen like what uh, the U.S.-led coalition did there to the Syrian army, which was striking uh, and killing nearly, what, 62, 63 Syrian army soldiers, wounding 100 of them. And of course, that was a strategic location because the airfield for the Syrian army is right in behind that front that the Syrian army holds back ISIS on. Uh, and, and it is, just as the Russian government has stated, it is very questionable that this was actually done deliberately in support of ISIS. Uh, because, and, and to us, it does look obvious that it is in support of ISIS in order to, a, to be able to weaken Bashar al-Assad. The whole objective of NATO to begin with is to topple Bashar al-Assad. Russia is there trying to keep him in power because he is truly the only elected government in the area. And of course, all kinds of propaganda also being uh, placed out there that uh, Assad and also the Russians guilty of uh, using, uh, you know, the incendiary devices there against its own people. And we've, the more and more we have dug upon this story here, we are finding less and less evidence that would support what NATO is claiming. Uh, and just to the contrary, we may find, as it was with the MP, the former MP uh, Erdem, who stated that they were bringing in chemical weapons across the uh, Turkish uh, government side going into Syria at the same time of the uh, attack in 2013 where it was blamed by the United States on Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian forces, for actually carrying out chemical attacks when in fact it was done by ISIS militants and made to look like if it were uh, the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad. So it's just a lot of skeptical things that are going on in the background and now we see Assad, his forces are really under a heavy siege. A lot of fighting going on in Aleppo to the north as well as around Syria. Uh, you can see by the photos we've been sharing with you already here, uh, the, the images are hard to see, but you can see the smoke rising out of there. You're talking about a five mile uh, shot with a photograph there and uh, using a 1200 millimeter lens. But anyway, <clears throat> let me take you live there where we were earlier this afternoon to the broadcast we did there overlooking Damascus. Bokitov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here uh, overlooking Damascus in the background here. We have come up today just to kind of get a feel for whether or not the ceasefire is really holding. I know there's been a lot of dispute uh, by um, America and Russia. Russia is blaming the United States saying that they're not holding up their end of the bargain of the ceasefire. And we already know from different reports in the media that in the background here, Syria, that all around the outskirts of, of Damascus, that there is strongholds of the rebels, the, the different groups that are battling against Bashar al-Assad. Uh, it has really come to a place that we're on the verge of maybe seeing the prophecy 
spoken of about Damascus becoming a ruinous heap. Uh, the battle, once it gets to Damascus, it will become a ruinous heap. But the question has to be uh, addressed is whether or not the brokered ceasefire between Vladimir Putin, uh, Russia, and uh, President Barack Obama, of course, their foreign ministers, John Kerry, and that of Prime Minister Lavrov of, the, of Russia, are they actually keeping the ceasefire? And where is it being broken at? Well, one thing we can say as we have come up thus far in the background here to the far east of, uh, of Damascus here, we are seeing that the ceasefire definitely is not being kept. We have heard shelling after shelling after shelling. And even uh, over the top of Mount Hermon, that's over my right hand shoulder, you can hear heavy, heavy bombing going off as well. So the question is, is who really is breaking the ceasefire? And of course, it is obvious that there is no ceasefire that is really in effect. Uh, there again, another. Now that bombing there clearly was dropped by airplanes, whether or not it be uh, American or Russian uh, bombing. That was a massive way off in the distance to the east of Damascus, heavy uh, bomb that has uh, fallen. Uh, but it's continually being broken. And after the U.S. has killed uh, some 60-something um, Syrian army soldiers in their attack on the position there, as Russia has claimed, they do believe that the U.S. is supporting uh, ISIS now, especially after the embarrassment up in Aleppo off to the north of this position here, where U.S. special forces were coming there to assist uh, the moderate rebels and only to be ran out by the moderate rebels. It was truly an embarrassment for the Pentagon, and now we see uh, that it, it, it appears, at least from the uh, open observation of military officials, that the U.S. is backing, uh, once again, ISIS. And ISIS is an enemy for everyone. It's an enemy for Israel. It is an enemy uh, for the U.S., is, or supposed to be an enemy of the U.S., but we've never seen <laughs> the United States really take an aggressive stance to remove ISIS. Only Russia has come in and done anything uh, of this sort. So the question rem remains now with tensions running high between Moscow and uh, the Pentagon and uh, the United States here in Washington, is this going to escalate into a much larger conflict? Uh, we know that Israel, the Israeli military, has uh, shelled also the Syrian army positions here in retaliation for mortar fire that has spilled over here into the Golan. Uh, and as we have come up here too, uh, not disclosing any positions at all, but we have seen a heavy, heavy military presence uh, of Israel up in the Golan here, and only, not definitely everything we can see is defensive in nature. It is only there to protect the citizens that live up in the Golan here, if in the event that a war spills over. And of course, Israel does have every right to be concerned because Iranian special forces are in this area around Damascus. So it becomes a very contentious place for Israel as well. And of course, the Iranians are fighting for Bashar al-Assad, and although Bashar al-Assad truly is the legitimate president of this country and is the one that should be supported by both the United States and elsewhere, it also puts Hezbollah and the Iranian forces here near Israel's border, which becomes a major concern for Israeli security as well. Uh, because easily that could turn. Iranian and Hezbollah could join forces and try to take the Golan back, which would be a very very bad situation and would cause Israel to enter into this conflict to protect its own border. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on the Syrian border overlooking Damascus. Erev Tov. Again, as you can see, guys, it is just uh, a, a disaster there. Isaiah 17, 1, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. And if any, any weakening in uh, Bashar al-Assad's forces there, the Syrian government army, then it's only going to get worse. And also while we were there, uh, there were uh, two United Nations uh, soldiers there speaking about the different things that's going on around there. And there was a building that had been being built there for some time. I didn't really know what it was, but as he was instructing the new UN officer there, he was stating that this is a hospital being built by Russia. Now that's right there on the border with Israel. Other thing that he mentioned as well was the fact that the Syrian army is training their soldiers uh, right there close to the Israeli border. And, at this, and then when you think of that, and then we think of the possibility 
that, uh, you know, that NATO, or excuse me, that, that, that uh, the Syrian army would attack Israel. It seems to me that the Syrian government uh, is, has confidence in Israel that they're not going to attack them, that they're actually putting themselves at risk being right there on the border with them. So I, I don't think so, guys. And I, I do believe, too, that Prime Minister Netanyahu and uh, that of President Vladimir Putin do have a very close relationship. And I, I do believe there's a, a great deal of trust there. Again, though, I get asked often about Ezekiel 38 and what do I think about this. Uh, I really am firmly persuaded that God is truly the United States. Uh, it is at the uttermost part of the north, according to the scriptural uh, speaking of there. And if you just go right on over the North Pole there, then you end up right in the United States there. So uh, there is a lot of evidence, especially, and I'll go into a teaching on that eventually one day here for you where I can share that with you. Uh, but nonetheless, 